All right, everybody, this is part four. This is the conversation about the uses of ISO 8. That's gonna be a little bit harder. Hopefully, if you've been watching the series, uh, you kind of get the gist of the basics and why certain things are great and why certain things aren't so great. So I'm gonna just go ahead and pick a random character. Just kind of look around the top of my roster. These are all characters I tend to use and just figure out him. Hella, her, apologies. Anyway, Hella. So let's talk about Hella. Uh, Hella has so much to her, right? She is a member of the Asgardians team. Uh, she is a mystic character to be used for certain game modes. She is a very good fifth character for like U7 fights. She is a pretty decent PvP character. Um, now that we ex like understand all of the things she's good at, at least right now, now we look at the classes and we determine which class helps her. We kind of talked about this in the first video. Hela does damage with pretty much every attack she does. So uh, Striker uh, would be absolutely phenomenal to get a little bit extra damage in. Problem is, uh, it doesn't add vulnerable. So just for her alone, Striker, or for any single character, Striker is a pretty weak ability, right? It's the kind of ability you add to a character who uh, is part of a team that's already adding vulnerable onto characters, whether it be a raider or a skirmisher, that doesn't particularly matter. This is a almost a support uh, classification of ISO 8s. Hopefully that helps. So for Hela to get Striker, it would mean that at least one or two other characters in your group are going to need to be putting vulnerable on or else this ability will never proc anything that said five percent damage is nothing to sneeze at and in the very early parts of a game if you just want to push a little bit more damage um, getting five or even ten percent damage and just figuring out the vulnerable thing in the iso 8 bonus attack later might be worthwhile for you. I don't think it is. I think Hela does a pretty reasonable amount of damage on her own, um, but that's my Hela. I don't know what your Hela does, so just keep that in mind. Uh, Fortifier. Fortifier, like I said, Fortifier is kind of one of those things you just always assume you could use, right? It adds a barrier to self just from placing it on. We know about the health boost, that's no big deal, but uh, on turn, burying self for 3% of this character's max health. This gives her a little bit more sustainability and survivability. I don't think Hela is necessarily that squishy, but U7.5 makes everybody squishy. So in those situations, or on war defense, anything you can do to make it harder for your opponent to kill the Hela uh, is going to be relevant. So... Fortifier always has relevancy on every character, no matter what. But in this case, uh, it's got a little bit more because you think about it from war or from trying to, you know, force your way up to higher versions of U7. Even in Dark Dimension, this is a big boost. So Fortifier sounds really good on Hela, just thinking about all the places she could be used. Healer. Meh. You know, um... I think Greg is the one who does the healing, you know, when he dies, uh, he throws his health. I don't think it's her, so I, I don't think that she gets any benefit from active healing. Uh, on turn, minor regeneration and heal the lowest ally for 5% of this character's health. Well, that's not terrible, but you, like, sure, 5% of about 200k, it's not unreasonable. It's okay, it just doesn't pop. It's less survivability for her, like Fortifier, but it is um, more sustain for an entire team. So I wouldn't necessarily touch Healer on Hela unless I knew that I was trying to get very clever with whatever team I was using for a raid. That's the only time I see this being relevant. I don't see it being relevant in... 
uh, war, I think Fortifier is pretty obviously the best option. She doesn't really need to be doing any extra healing on her own. But then again, if your Hela is 100 to 120k, somewhere in that range, maybe, just maybe, uh, it is relevant and she will keep up other characters or throw some passive healings out to characters like uh, Sif. That said, because this doesn't say non-summon characters, she may end up healing a Greg who survived an attack or uh, maybe uh, a Loki summon on war defense. So to me, healer just doesn't really jump out. Uh, Skirmisher, this one is kind of relevant. Uh, apply vulnerable to primary target. Um, if the target is vulnerable, clear one positive effect. If the target is vulnerable, clear one positive effect. Uh, she's a character that's constantly hitting people, right? So because of that, uh, anytime you're either applying vulnerable or doing something when a target is vulnerable, every time you're hitting a character uh, that is vulnerable or applying vulnerable to a character you hit, uh, especially characters that where every attack is a, an attack, like Hela or Sabretooth, or every action they take is an attack, rather. Uh, this is where these kind of shine. You're constantly getting uh, vulnerable applied. Now, it says on primary hit. What that means is, if you're doing an AoE or otherwise, uh, the character that is targeted uh, is the primary hit. So if you use perfect example, say Drax is taunting, and he has a vulnerable tag, and you use Hela's ultimate, um, it will AoE everybody, but because that Drax was the target, it will also, uh, at level 3, clear the positive effect. So it will spread all of the debuffs on Drax, clear his taunt, and hit everybody. That's a very weird pocket case, um, but sounds great. And pretty reasonable based on what else she's going to be doing anyway. So Skirmisher, just kind of on its own is good enough for Hela because it's applying vulnerable, which you're gonna imagine some other characters on your team might take advantage of without going into detail, but it also allows her to utilize that vulnerable buff um, based on you know how Greg will die in speed meter. So Skirmisher is a totally great option for Hela, just in war, in PvP, in arena, uh, pretty much everywhere it, that you plan on using Hela because of just how well it works with vulnerable. And last, we have Raider. So, Raider gets very interesting. Uh, Hela doesn't have a particularly high crit chance, as we've discussed in the uh, previous videos when we talked about how these abilities are relevant. And since it only applies vulnerable if the character crits, this kind of buff is less valuable to Hela until you get to the end. I think in general, Raider is one of those uh, abilities that, you, unlike the other ones, you really don't see much value uh, until you get to the end. Now, some characters gaining 15% crit chance is incredibly reasonable, ignoring the vulnerable, like not even paying attention to it. Um, some characters, it doesn't necessarily matter. We've talked before. If a character doesn't hit that often... Uh, then it doesn't matter, like Sinister or even Emma. Emma would be a terrible character to have Raider on because Emma only has one attack that damages, much like Sinister. Uh, so, I don't think so. This doesn't uh, scan for me too well. But if, you know, you're already at level 5 uh, on one of the other abilities, there is a kind of build you can make where, you know, the extra... Th 25% crit chance on Hela combined with the crit damage means that sometimes she just wipes out an opposing party. I'm thinking war defense, I'm thinking uh, arena, I'm thinking PvP. All of these things become incredibly relevant. So just in general, when looking at Raider, you want to look at whether or not critting is something that happens. Um, how often the characters are multi-hitting because obviously if you're hitting five characters that's five different chances to crit something might happen um, but what i do think is interesting is uh, you can apply plus one vulnerable up to a maximum of three that's an ability i haven't had enough time to play around with i think that most of the time if a character has one or two stacks of vulnerable 
the games don't usually go long enough where that's incredibly relevant. Uh, I don't think she itself is going to add multiple stacks in one attack. She doesn't double hit too often. Her basic could double hit, but if her basic double hits them, it's because that person was the lowest health. And if both of them were critting, there's probably a high chance that character's dead. Hella does hit really hard. So for Hella, Raider just doesn't stand up. Now, hopefully, uh, I used Hella as the example, but hopefully you kind of got the idea when we discussed the uses of all of these uh, abilities and where they become relevant. The only thing now to look at is Hella herself, the character. Uh, and you can replace Hella with literally anybody. We talked about it as if I was using Hella. So what team comp am I doing? For me, I like the idea of having a little bit more sustain on every character and then moving to a bit more aggressive as I feel comfortable with either my healing or the way the characters are surviving themselves through red stars or whatever. Uh, so in general, like I've said many times, fortifier and healer are really great starting options. Uh, once you get into the damaging ones, the skirmisher, the raider, and the striker, that's when you have to not only look at the character themselves, but also the team they're being used on. And I think we have a really good example of a character to do that with in Carnage. So Carnage, every single attack Carnage does, uh, does damage, right? He, uh, he only gets drain on his team. So for the sake of this conversation, we will not be discussing Carnage in a vacuum. We will be discussing Carnage present with at least Symbiote Spider-Man and possibly some other characters, but specifically those two characters as you've probably seen, they work very well together. Moving into ISO 8s on him, we start looking at Striker. On primary hit, if target is vulnerable, get a bonus attack. What? The bonus attack is static. It is what it says here. It's not an assist or anything like that. It's its own kind of attack, and it gives increased damage to Carnage. Carnage does do a lot of damage both front side and back side through bleed stacks, so increasing his damage is incredibly relevant. Um, if you have a character like Symbiote Spider-Man who is constantly multi-hitting, constantly putting vulnerable on targets, whether it be through having a Raider or a Skirmisher, uh, because he yeah, had AoEs, etc., uh, this attack could just be constantly doing extra damage, which for this team and how Carnage works will make the Symbiotes go faster, specifically him and Symbiote Spider-Man. Maybe you got the other ones. That's up to you. Uh, and that's all relevant. Any extra attack has a chance of, of proccing something. So for Carnage, Striker is totally reasonable. Uh, as providing you have someone or some group of people capable of making targets vulnerable, he's going to be hitting fast, he's going to be hitting often, he's going to be hopefully giving turn meter to the other symbiotes on your team. It gives him a little bit of extra sustainability, as with all things. The bonus attack is not the important part. The important part here is the pure damage. Striker makes sense for Carnage. Fortifier, surprisingly, makes no sense for Carnage uh, with Symbiote Spider-Man in this conversation because they're sustaining themselves very well. Um, whether they have defense up from Venom or from a character that's granting them defense up, uh, whether they're constantly gaining their own life uh, through attacks or bleed stacks, you don't really need to worry too much about barriers. He doesn't need that extra sustainability. If he does, it means your Carnage is probably a little underleveled for the content you're doing, and it's reasonable. That's why it's always a good option, but it's not the best option, even a little bit. Healer, again, same kind of thing. You don't need him to be healing because the team is healing. Uh, this helps them a little bit outside of raids, but even then... I don't really particularly care about how often Carnage is throwing out heals. I will give him a little bit of credit. He has a ton of... His health pool is very large. Like 265,000 health at less than 100k. And uh, what am I? Only ever one push away from seeing that number go... Ah, damn. Thought I was going to get there. Well, that's only 4,000 extra health. Like, it's a big deal. Uh, but it it's... With Symbiote Spider-Man, as we've been discussing, it's not going to help too much. You don't need that extra level of sustainability. So just like Fortifier, you get to go away from that. Uh, now we go into the other two, Skirmisher and Raider. I'm actually going to skip Skirmisher here. Can't, can't imagine why, right? On crit, apply plus one vulnerable, up to a maximum of three, gain 15% crit chance. 
Uh, I don't think Carnage... Carnage's value doesn't come from one big attack. You know, he gets it with his special sometimes, but that character really has to uh, be bleeding already. And since the team manipulates stacks so well, uh, you re you only use that special on Carnage with Symbiote Spider-Man as like a really big heal if Carnage is about to go down, because it's a big AoE attack. None of Carnage's attacks really do a great deal of damage on their own. A lot of their damage is backloaded. Crit chance just doesn't make sense. Another thing is he very rarely hits all the targets. He can hit multiple targets. Um, and, you know, in that conversation we just had, it's possible that use that special, it crits a bunch of people in a circle, uh, and that's going to get vulnerable on everybody. That's reasonable. But you don't ever really want to use that special to force this out of the way, because it's not going to do too much damage on its own. It's a good option um, with just Symbiote Spider-Man, uh, but it, you're not going to be applying too much vulnerability, and it's not like that extra crit chance is going to improve what Carnage does. So I'm not 100% sure on Raider on Carnage. I think it can be used, but not a huge fan. We're going to go to Skirmisher. On primary hit, apply vulnerable to primary target. This is on any of his attacks. And if you guys have you ever used Carnage with Symbiote Spider-Man, uh, Carnage's basic, or every attack, uh, immediately hits the primary target. You know, his ultimate is going to put a bunch of bleed stacks on him and apply vulnerable. Uh, his special is going to hit in the circle. It's only going to apply vulnerable to the primary target, obviously, but you don't have to worry about critting or anything like that. And his basic will chain if a character is debuffed. So, that's pretty okay. On primary hit, if target is vulnerable, clear one positive effect. Through Skirmisher, you give Carnage's basic, which is one of the most commonly used abilities on Carnage if you're using him in raids, uh, because you have to wait for cooldowns and stuff. You're giving him the Venom uh, Taunt Clear, or the Death Proof Clear. If you're playing the team right, you're probably getting rid of a ton of buffs that your opposing team has just through this. So for Carnage specifically, obviously in the conversation we were having with if Symbiote Spider-Man is present, I really like this ability. I like it because you can give Symbiote Spider-Man literally any of the other ones but this, and it's incredibly likely that he's going to either take advantage of uh, the vulnerables that Carnage is putting up, or he's going to be putting up vulnerables that Carnage can then take advantage of by removing buffs. It gives you the option that's relevant. So just for Carnage on his own, it seems to me that thinking of it from raids with Symbiote Spider-Man, Skirmisher and Striker are two pretty good options. Um, Fortifier and Healer are not very necessary, and Raider. Now, we go one little step further, just to keep the conversation going. What happens on the full Symbiote team? Honestly, at that point, you have to look at every single character and base what they're supposed to be doing um, in order to make them flow really well. So, the full Symbiote team, we've seen Anti-Venom. We know he has uh, a da two damaging attacks and one special that heals. We know every attack Scream does is a heal. Uh, well, they're all heal and raids, but uh, is damage dealing. So we look at Scream, we look at Carnage, we look at Symbiote Spider-Man, we look at Venom as the main damage dealers on the team. And you can pretty much find a space for every single slot, uh, except Fortifier. Maybe Fortifier on Scream, but uh, of this fight. You can end up with two skirmishers, a raider, a healer, and striker. And the healer could be Symbiote Spider-Man to turn that 3% uh, on debuff to like 5% heal. Uh, you know, something really simple. Uh, it could be on... Uh, it wouldn't be on Venom. <laughs> you could have raider uh, on crit on Venom um, just to make sure that whenever he uses his ultimate there's a chance multiple characters get vulnerable, which will set up for like a carnage ult. There, there's so many different options on that team. 
that you really have to look at what they all do and determine not necessarily what the absolute best case scenario is, but what makes sense for the flow of the fight. And that's going to always be coming on a case by case basis. And it's kind of where this series is going to lead to as we move forward. We're going to do ISO 8 specific as I'm able to test teams. I don't really just want to say this is what I think. I want to be able to at least kind of show a little bit of. So comment section, if there's a team in particular that you are putting your ISO 8s in and you want to help me uh, get some information on this by either sharing videos or just you know telling me what's going on, please comment below and let me know. Uh, this way I can give uh, real information, not s hypothetical, theoretical, I read on a piece of paper information uh, on how these characters work and what they're going to do. Obviously, symbiotes aren't completely out yet, so we'll wait a little bit on that. But maybe you worked on your X-Force for uh, war and you're like, this is the way I built this team out. And now Domino doesn't die immediately because I gave her Fortifier or something like that. Any of those options uh, might be helpful to me as I'm building these out, but that's where I want to go. I want to be able to look at an entire team or in general a comp. It doesn't have to be a specific named team or a tagged team. It just has to be five characters. And I could think off the top of my head, like Techwing was a team. How would I place those there? You know, there's some abilities that make sense. There are others that just kind of lose out a little. So I'd like to figure that out. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, comment below and let me know any of the stuff I said before, or if there's more information that you think I left out and need to do an additional video. Have a good night. Have a great day. I've been Tony Scangilli, and I'll catch you later.